Welcome all. We're grateful that each of you could make it here today. It's a wonderful day. It's a beautiful sunny day, so we're glad that you're able to come. Uh, in terms of announcements, we have church council meeting right after church today, so please plan on attending if you're able and uh, be part of that. On July 17th, we have the church-wide yard sale. Marlene, you want to fill us in? Yes, there's lots of fun things. Um, my friend Patty is here visiting, and we're going to start working on organizing this week. So if anybody has any time during the week, the idea we're going to try is putting the clothes in the fellowship hall, since that's the most of what we need to sort. Um, if you have pop-up tents, start bringing those by. Um, folding tables, we're always glad to have those. And of course, any donations. Um, so if you have any time this week, just give me a call. I'm pretty open, and we'll just figure we'll come down and try to knock it off. So Friday is our big day, so what all hands on deck. What time do you want us then? Nine. Okay. <laughs> Gracious. And what time? I don't even know what time we start Saturday. What time do we usually start the yard sales? At eight or nine? I have to think what the signs say. Eight. Eight. So we'll get the signs up here this week too, and do all the Facebook postings and. When that comes up, if you're on Facebook, share that. Yes. And we usually get very good results from that. Yes, very good. And we do have Potter's House coming to pick up everything. The only yes. thing they won't take is books. Okay. And so, you know, want to donate books, fine, but those are ones we're going to have to handle on our own. Absolutely. So it's a fun time. And obviously Saturday, come on out and spend lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It's for a good cause, yes. helping out the all of our local charities. Well, we so. haven't had a UMW fundraiser in a long yes, time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, use our uh, announcement times to talk about our dear friend Juanita Russell, who passed away yesterday. So it was very sad. Miss Phyllis, did you get an update from her, her sister? Or? Not really. Um, I think she has been taken or gone away to the hospital. Sure. Kay, her niece, I guess, uh, said she'd been not feeling well, and uh, they decided to take her to the hospital. And uh, I guess she did. They did some tests there, but nothing came back immediately. So I guess you got to see her Thursday, but she was sleeping uh, in bed. And uh, then she just took a turn for the worse and did did not recover. So we got the word last night. We still don't know any. Uh, arrangements yet, but please stay tuned because we will put that word out as soon as we hear it. In terms of birthdays, we have Helene today, so please uh, drop her a note, let her know of our love for her. Bud Costello, who hasn't been with us for a while, but still a member of our church, is on the 13th, and Mary Elliott is on the 19th. She's a, another, comes every so often, but she's definitely missed and she's loved here, so please plan on uh, dropping her a note too. All right, concludes our announcements. I'm not sure what happened to our Randy, but uh, let's go ahead and stand for our call to worship. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> your praise of thanksgiving. Come on this day, grateful for God's wondrous gifts to us. Sing with great enthusiasm of God's mighty power and love. We celebrate the love that reigns our lives. It is a wonderful thing to praise God. May 
God's praise always be in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. We'll turn now to our affirmation of faith using the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 66. He is home and doing better, but still in recovery mode. The family of Danny Noel. Danny, of course. Pete and Sherry, we're glad Pete's here doing better. We're grateful for that and continue to pray for your continued full recovery. Doug and Lee are still uh, on the road to mending, but they're not here today, so keep them in our prayers. We pray for James, Harold, Kathleen, Bobby, Walter, and uh, Lauren Rosenbachs, and of course the Rosenbachs who are our missionaries in Germany. Are there other joys or concerns you want to share with your church family? Yes, sir. The family of Lloyd Gimble. Family of Lloyd Gimble? Sure. He passed away last week. He was the father of my classmates. Very good. Father of one of Tucker's classmates. Pray for them. Other joys or concerns? Joy of the Coles in France. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Start classes tomorrow. And what are the classes? Uh, it's language. The language school. Right. Lovely. 
<laughs> yes. How long will he be? Wow. Glad he made it through all of the hoops he must have had to jump through. Yes. Well, isn't that actually, considering all that, you Amen. Amen. For Cole Whittington. Other joys? Yes, ma'am. Joy that Patty's here with me. Amen. We agree. <laughs> Anything else? For Joyce Gillespie, who has lung cancer. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else? Let's bow our heads then and go to our God in prayer. Oh Lord, our God, you are the Holy One. You are the one who comes to us before we even know we need you. You are the great creator of all that is. Billions of years ago, you set in motion this earth that we live in. And you made it possible for us to come to know you, to be blessed by you, and to give our lives to you for which we give you strength and praise. Lord, in this spirit, our spirits dance with you, just like David danced as he brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. For you are grand, and you love us, and you care for us. So, Lord, this day let our hearts sing boldly of your wondrous love for us. Let us be your people, people who place their hope in you, people who step out in faith because your Holy Spirit calls us and empowers us to be Christ today. We are so grateful for all that you have done for us each and every day, so grateful for the life you have given us and the work you have placed before us, the fields that are white, ready for harvest. Help us, O oh God, to be those harvesters each and every day. Lord, it's summertime. And in the midst of the summertime, we often get lost in our daily lives. We, we often forget to turn to you, to remember that you are our God, that you make everything possible. Especially in these days of pandemic, be with us, God. Help us to not only step out in faith and do your will, but to enjoy all those around us and to testify of your great love for us to all that we meet and see. Forgive us when we are tempted to stray from our time of worship and focus us entirely on you and not ourselves. We celebrate this day. Help us to remember all the wondrous things you continue to do for us. Let us look at the world as a place of delight in spite of what is happening. And when we encounter situations of sorrow and hurt, Help us to be ready to bring hope and peace, to bring your love to each one. Be with us these summer days and prepare us for ministry and mission in your holy name. Prepare us to proclaim your grace, your glory. Place your hands of healing on our lives and on all those whose names we praise today. That your healing touch would be with them, that your grace would sustain them, that you wrap your arms of comfort around those who have lost loved ones. We thank you for safe travels, and we ask, oh God, that you would be with gold and bring him home to us quickly and safely. Lord, this day, prepare us for mission and ministry. We pray for our great nation and all her leaders. We ask that your wisdom would descend upon them to make your kingdom come through all that we do and say. We also remember our men and women who are in harm's way for her defense, that your grace would be with them, that you would bring them home safely and well. Lord, prepare us to serve you faithfully all of our days, and especially this day. For we ask all of this in the holy name of Jesus, who is our Christ. And as he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes to us from the book of 2 Samuel, the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 5. And then we'll jump down to verses 12 to 19. Hear God's word for us. Again, David gathered all the choice men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, 
whose name is called by the name, the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. So they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinabad, who was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinabad, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Ahio, who went before the ark. Then David and all the house of Israel played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments of firwood, on harps and on stringed instruments, on tambourines and on sistrums and on cymbals. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Adam to the city of David with gladness. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that he sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. And then David danced before the Lord and with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with sounds of the trumpet. Now as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished the offerings, burnt offerings, and the Lord of hosts, then he distributed among all the people, among the whole multitude of Israel, both the women and the men, to everyone a loaf of bread, a piece of meat, and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed, everyone, to his house. It concludes the reading of our scriptures. Today we're talking about setting our hope. We need to set our hope where it belongs. Because it's really easy for us, who are especially those who are, have enough to eat, have a roof over our heads, have all the things we need to set our hope on our things instead of on our God. Last week, we spoke of bone and flesh, those around us who we are related to, that God calls us to expand our understanding of family, our bone and flesh, to include all people who love the Lord who understand Jesus as their Lord and Savior in whom His Holy Spirit resides. God calls us to expand our definition of church and the church body to encompass not only those who worship here, but all those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And then it takes it one step further to include all those who will come to believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So clearly we're not allowed to choose because we don't know who's going to accept Jesus at some point in the future. We need to reach out to everyone with the love of God, with God's grace and God's wisdom and courage. Our Ephesians text continues and expands on this theme. It, it is God, our all-powerful, all-knowing God who predestines, who already knew who was going to accept him and who wasn't. We are privileged to know Jesus. We are blessed to be included in God's plan of salvation. But that also gives us responsibilities to all those who are around us. We're adopted into God's family through the work of Jesus. Not because of anything we have done. Not any actions that we took. Because in God's love, He foreknew us. He calls us in the power of His Spirit. He set the universe in motion at just the right instant that resulted in our coming to faith. God looked through all time in Genesis and said that it was good. He looked at us and called us good. So our hope is in God, in Jesus the Holy Spirit, and not anything we can do, not anything we can earn. And so Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14 reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us, with all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hopes on Christ, 
might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our scripture begins, because he has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual gift. We are blessed because God, in his love and in his grace towards us, has so crafted this world that we live in, that we have responded to his love in the power of his spirit with faith in Jesus Christ, making him our Lord and Savior. And when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we are made holy just as God is holy because Christ in his mercy died on the cross for each one of our sins. God is to be praised because in his infinite wisdom he has showered upon us every spiritual blessing, starting with the gift of Jesus for our salvation, who makes us holy and blameless before our holy God and thereby allows us in his grace to be adopted into his holy family. Think of that blessing that we have. We are members of God's family made holy by Jesus Christ who died for our sins. That is the good news that Ephesians is trying to tell us, and it's good news that we need to share with the world. Our responsibility is to acknowledge this truth, to set our hope in this truth, to live our lives, to gear our lives in such a way that God is glorified and not we ourselves. That's the expansion I refer to. We are humans crafted in God's image to choose. To choose for God. We're supposed to choose God. But we have the freedom not to. We are chosen in faith in Christ our Lord who gives us the mission to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth. Making disciples, baptizing in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But that also is a choice. We accept Jesus and we are given a mission. And both are things we need to decide to do because we love Jesus, because we place our faith in the holy God who calls us and empowers us to do his will. You are blessed. You are chosen. You're a part of the family. But a declaration to offer all of us who are thirsty people in these days of pandemic, who need the Lord our God, who need to reach out with the grace of God. Consider what it might mean for a young person struggling with feelings of self-worth to know God loves them that God calls them, that God has a purpose for them. This is the good news. God is for each one of us. God will never abandon us. He has made us his children. He has made himself known to us in the power of his Holy Spirit that seals us for redemption, that allows us to truly live the lives he called us to live each and every day. But again, we have a choice. We have to place our faith in him. We have to set our hope in him. We have to step out in faith and do his will. It's an amazing proclamation. Think of the joy it would be to be able to proclaim such a word to the world. The word that God loves them. The word that God is for them. The word that God cares for them. But as this text unfolds in this opening thesis of the letter, it becomes revealed that the good news is not something that we should contain within ourselves. Yet that's exactly what we so often do. The Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world. Because the gospel message is for the world. From Jesus, who resides at the Father's side in the heavenly places, through us to the world. That's the plan. God wants us. God calls us. And God purposes us. And then God empowers us to be Christ in this time and in this place. We're called to be holy and blameless before God who loves us and calls us to himself and then share that good news with the world. The hope and the will of God, the beloved, is that the whole world will be gathered up into the blessings that is the covenant of God into his beloved community. That's his hope for all of us. But all of us have a choice to make. Our job, it appears from these verses, is not to draw lines of exclusion, but inclusion. To open wide the arms of grace-filled faith and to welcome, to bless, to adopt into our family all of God's children, all of God's sons and daughters into his holy communion, into his holy church. 
That is the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, and therefore our purpose as well. We who have been adopted are now the adopters. We who have been blessed are now the ones who bless. We who have been included are now the includers. The circle enlarges, the ripples work out to bring transformation to a world sorely in need of their God. Sorely in need of making God's kingdom come through their every effort. Because that is the hope of the world and that is the hope that we set our hope on. Our hope is in Jesus because God wills it, God empowers us through his spirit to do it. The challenge is, will we set our hope in him? Will we truly believe that he is for us? Will we hear his call in our lives each and every day? Will we believe that he is for us and therefore there is nothing we can accomplish in his will and in his grace? You see, the Holy Spirit seals us and empowers us to do the work of the kingdom. But if we don't set our hope on him, we may not feel that we're ready or able to. We may not even want to spread the good news of Christ to the world. Gearing up for life is a choice of what life we want to lead. Do we want to lead as God calls us to, or will we lead as the world calls us to? Because the world calls us to lie, to steal, to cheat, to do whatever it takes to succeed at whatever costs. But God calls us to love. God calls us to care for our neighbors. God calls us to preach the gospel, to feed the hungry, to care for the lost, to do all that he gives us the resources to do. But this is a choice that we make when we set our hope not on the things of this world, but on that things, those things that reside in the heavenly places. And that is God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We place our faith in him, and he empowers us to do his will to expand his kingdom come. Our text encourages us to remember who God is. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blesses us each and every day. God blesses us with spiritual blessings that open our eyes to the truth. Our God is. Jesus is. The Holy Spirit is. He is within us, empowering us to do His will. God chose us before the foundation of the world. The question is, will we choose Him today? Will we believe in Him? Will we step out in faith when He calls? We set our hope on the God who has blessed us in every way. That's what we're celebrating. That's what we're testifying to by telling our story each and every day. How much he's blessed us. How much he loves us. How much he guides us and empowers us every day to get through this life, which is far, far from easy. You all, we all have a story to tell. Maybe it's how God touched us and we came to faith in him. Maybe it's how he touched us and got us through a difficult time. But we all have stories to tell, to share with our neighbors, all those around us who need to hear the good news that God loves, that God is. These aren't exclusive blessings, folks. Rather, we are, crying. we are called and reminded that we are blessed to be a blessing. How are we reaching out to share the good news of Christ with the community that is all around us? Whose life has been affected by the church in tangible ways? Tell the story. Tell the story to all you meet. Certainly the letter of Ephesians is about gearing up, about making sure that our faith is not just an internal thing, not just a head thing. It is about living out the faith of Jesus Christ in our everyday lives. Living out our faith can begin with a simple celebration of all that God has done for us each day. It's a good to be blessed. It's good to be adopted. It's good to belong, but the whole world needs to hear that truth and come to that same saving faith that we have. It's good to remind ourselves that we're not alone, that God is for us, that Jesus Christ is at his side, empowering us to do his will, that his Holy Spirit resides within us, empowering us to do his will, to make his kingdom come. We are part of something bigger than ourselves, but are we willing to accept the challenge of speaking out of telling the world of all the blessings that we're showered with. That is the challenge of our scriptures. That is what it means to be Christ today for the world. Will we accept that challenge? Let us pray. Holy One of Israel, Holy One, who sent Jesus Christ into the world to tell us how to live our lives. Holy One, in whose Holy Spirit we reside and are empowered. We give you thanks and praise. Help us to celebrate the truth that you are, that you live, that you empower, that you guide. Help us to 
reach out to the world all around us with this truth so that your kingdom would come through us for the world. Help us to answer your challenge in these scriptures. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite our musicians to come forward for our anthem. blessings, so many showers of blessings that we cannot count them. You've lavished us with redemption, forgiveness, and 
grace. You've been our God. You sent Jesus Christ. You give us your Holy Spirit. And you bless us with so many physical and real blessings. We just can't count them. So as we give back to you just a portion of those many gifts, we ask you bless these gifts for your grace, for your kingdom come, to make a difference in this world. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
that you take our hearts and seal them in the power of your spirits. Seal them for your service. Seal them for your grace. Seal them to be a blessing to all the world around us. Give us your strength as we go forth from this place in the power of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to be Christ today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.